Well, 30 years ago, I was driving through the Mount Everest National Nature Preserve in the Tibet Autonomous Region of China. It's called Chomolongma National Nature Preserve, because Chomolongma is the Tibetan word for Mount Everest. And out the window, we saw this huge field of rape plants. Brilliant. We stopped the vehicle. I said, this is great. We jumped out and we went and talked to the person. We looked at the plants. And yes, they were rape plants growing from rape seeds at this elevation of 15,000 feet, roughly 4,000 meters. And I immediately connected in my mind, isn't this interesting? Because these rape seeds are capturing the sunlight. So there's a lot of energy that these rape plants are capturing. And that energy is being condensed into the rape seeds. Well, two years ago, I drove back through that same area and I've been going through. It's the main highway between Lhasa and Tibet. Kathmandu in Nepal, and those fields that had rape plants growing for their seeds, those fields are now growing barley and growing potatoes. In other words, fields that were once capturing the sunlight so the sunlight could be squeezed out of these seeds, those same fields are now growing food for people to eat. so that the nutrition, the food security has all gone up because those food fields are now producing food. And they don't need the rape seeds anymore because they're getting their electricity from photovoltaic panels. That's more light, easier than having to grow the rape plant, squeeze the seeds, and then burn a wick in the oil. Well, because the quality of life has improved for the people who live in the middle of a nature preserve, they've moved from being the second poorest county in all of China, Dingri County in the Tibet Autonomous Region of China. They've moved from being the second poorest into being middle class in Chinese society. And of course, middle class today in China is a lot better off than middle class it was 30 years ago. So the people are better off. They're better off economically. They have food security. They have better health. They have advanced. But what's interesting and important is that those fields and those villagers that once were poor are very similar to these experiences we have here at the headquarters of Future Generations, where we're in the middle of our nature preserve. It's called the Monongahela National Forest. And half the land is being used for traditional agriculture. And half the land, as you can see, is being protected for the watershed, for the biodiversity, for the trees. So that the people's land here is being used to improve the quality of their life and to protect the environment for the whole planet. And the same thing is happening at the highest place on Earth, Mount Everest. For the highest need that we as people have, which is to develop new ways of sustainable living that are partnering people and nature, that are partnering with our governments, whatever they might be, that are giving us a future that has a rising quality of life. We as people are vulnerable today. Our way of living is vulnerable. If we don't do something now, we as people and our way of living is actually endangered. It is our human energy now that we can learn to reprogram, to get new behaviors, to partner, with nature to address the highest need that the humans and that all species have, 
So from this mustard field at the middle of the Chomolunga Nature Preserve and the lessons that we've learned about partnering that are being extended through future generations educational programs, we have some hope to move not from vulnerability towards being endangered, but to move from vulnerability towards sustainability and inclusion of all. Thank you very much.